morning, everybody. We're starting to kind of let people in just a couple minutes late here. Got a little bit of a mix up going on today, or I shouldn't say mix up, I should say shake up and things. Just a little bit for the Figure It Out Friday. Good morning. We're going to keep letting people come in. I don't know if we're streaming on Facebook yet, but let me get over there real quick. We've got a good one for you guys today. Having a, a new guest on for Figure It Out Friday. It's always good to hear from new people, hear their stories, their experiences, and you know what they've learned from those experiences. So we're always grateful for the, the guests coming on and sharing their stories with us. Chad, good morning. Chris, good morning. Colin, thank you. Good to see you again. Chris is uh, out there driving again today. We've got Stephanie and Dee and Michelle. Thank you all for being on this morning. Good morning. If you are new here, or even if you're not new here, go ahead in the chat, let people know where you're from. Uh, you know, this is a great group to meet people and network. So we always like to have uh, you know, people coming in and sharing with each other. It's not just about us, the people that are speaking on the show, but you know, sharing with each other and growing and learning from each other. We've built a really great network here. So we appreciate you all. Um, show is going to be just a little bit different today. As you noticed, Brock is not here. It's me, your lovely Thursday morning host, Christian. Uh, Brock has a graduation this morning. So he is attending the graduation. I, I can't remember if it is um, Brielle or, or uh, geez, I'm drawing a blank. Bryce walking, walking the stage this morning. But We've got a guest this morning. I'm just going to go ahead and introduce her now and let let her get going on her story a little bit. Let me pull up my, my bio. So this is uh, Jenea Barnes. She's in, I think you're in New York, correct? I am in New York. New York, perfect. So she's a career empowerment coach, which is very, very good. I mean, that's the stuff we talk about here a lot is finding your purpose, your meaning, and your work. And uh, she's a speaker, podcast host, and she has helped a lot of people, hundreds of people find meaningful and authentic work and finding that work-life balance doing what they love. Um, so it took her many years, so it's about 20 years of study and some training with leading experts in the multiple modalities to break free from some after effects of childhood trauma. And um, she discovered some secrets and some unique ways to help her clients through those experiences, I would say. So with that being said, I'm going to let her kind of take over, tell her story. Um, Janae, thank you. Janaea, excuse me. Thank you so much for being here today. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So where do we begin? I guess we begin at the beginning. You know, a lot of people have had adverse experiences in their life. And one of the things when people talk about trauma, they say, you know, there it's this big word of like these horrible experiences. And while I had lots of horrible experiences when I was young, uh, you know, it's important for people to understand that the meaning of trauma is basically any event where you're emotionally overwhelmed and you can't process the emotions in that moment. So what most people's quote trauma isn't necessarily these big crazy events. It's these events that happened to them when they were small, they were two years old and something was really overwhelming. They got lost in a grocery store and these things anchor into your nervous system and they affect the rest of your life. And while I had lots of big trauma, um, I'll tell you one of my stories because it is probably the main story that shaped my life. When I was four years old, my best friend was a Vietnam vet and a heroin junkie. My mom wasn't paying too much attention. She actually thought when I was spending time with this person that I was hanging out with a little boy that lived up the street. And so his name was Carl and we used to have so much fun. We would, he would play the guitar, we would sing songs, we would make these little magical energy balls and throw them at the tree. And one day I went up to his house and unbeknownst to me, he was going through heroin withdrawal because I was four, I didn't understand all of that stuff yet, but he was really, really sick. And I was distraught, I wanted to help him. I think as all kids really are, very helpful creatures. <laughs> I think all humans are helpful creatures. Some stuff gets in the way later in life to prevent that maybe. But I wanted to help him and he told me, Jenea, there's nothing you can do. You just need to go home. I feel 
like I'm going to die. I really want something sweet. Just go home. So I misheard him as we often do when we're emotionally overwhelmed. And I thought he said that he was gonna die unless he got something sweet and I was like okay I can fix this so I ran home I jumped up on the counter opened up the cabinets I was looking for the sugar and of course I was hysterical and totally distraught and my mom comes in she's like Janaea what are you doing and I'm there hysterical trying to explain to her that Carl's not gonna live unless I bring him some sugar but emotionally overwhelmed miss communication and I was four <laughs> I probably wasn't speaking very clearly my mom thought that she said that Carl had told me that he was going to take his life unless I brought him some food so she sat me down and she said that boy is manipulating you he will not take his life and you will not bring him any food and so I listened because I was a good girl it was very it was dangerous for me to disobey my mother and a few nights later I woke up in the middle of the night and I knew something was terribly wrong you know those gut feelings you just know and so I ran out of the house. My mom and her friends, they were partying in the living room. They didn't even see me slip out. I ran up to Carl's house. I ran into his house and into his room and I found him on his bed, barely awake. And he grabbed my hand and he held it tight and he looked at me. He was just barely there. And he looked at me and said, Jenea, you are magic. And he slipped away. He had just OD'd right before I came. And so I, of course, didn't understand this. And this was a very emotionally overwhelming experience. I couldn't explain it to my mom. And so my mind repressed that trauma because it was too big for my little brain to comprehend. And what happened over the course of life is your unconscious mind holds all of that stuff. And it's still, it's trying to prevent any kind of repeat terrible event. So a lot of beliefs were formed, a lot of things that got in my way my whole life. This fear of not being good enough was sort of where it started because I believed that it was all my fault. Because if I had only brought him the sugar, then he would have survived. And so this came sort of a pattern of trying to save people. If people were in distress, I always had to try to fix it. And I think so many people really understand that feeling of trying to fix something. Uh, somebody's upset. You just want to fix it instead of hold the space. And these events shape the way we move throughout our life. And so often when people get into their careers, they get to these places where they're stuck. They've gotten so far and they can't go any further. And even people that had these really happy childhoods, remember these, these things that anchor into your nervous system are just overwhelming events that you couldn't process at the time. You didn't have the resources at the time to process. And much like a smell, you all know how a smell brings you right back in time and you feel the feelings of being right there. These similar situations will pull you right back. So for me, if somebody was in distress, I would be right back to being four years old with this overwhelm of trying to fix it. And instead of being able to operate with my whole, all my years, all my 50 years of experience, I would loop right back into that place. Uh, you just kind of in this panic trying to fix things. And so this is what happens so often for so many people in their career. So I went through 20 years of trying to figure out how to feel better. I had other traumas that stacked on top of that, but I just, I knew somewhere in there, there had to be a way to feel better. And so I kept chasing and I kept chasing and so many things did not work. <laughs> and you begin to wonder and you know, is there something wrong with me? Why is everybody else having like these great lives 
And why is my life so terrible? I put on the good face like so many of us have done. And, but inside it was like a firestorm. It was always just trying to navigate and stay calm. And, and, you know, we learn the beautiful thing about these adverse experiences, whatever they might be, we do gain superpowers from them. So because it was dangerous for me to act out or any like anything like that, I could keep my nervous system very calm in all kinds of situations, no matter how crazy they were. And that supported me in certain places. It supported me for sure when I was a bartender and their fights broke out. <laughs> I could definitely handle those situations much better than a lot of my coworkers could. But, you know, we, because those, those superpowers that we gain are based on this survival instinct, we swing so far to one side that it's all about prevent and protect. We're focused on what's missing. We're focused on what's lacking instead of this place where we can create from it. And so one of the things in all the work that I did trying to heal myself is I figured out the way to bring the superpowers in balance. So you get to have choice around how you use them, when you use them. So you're not in this reactive mode. So you're not automatically sliding into these behaviors that while they're good sometimes, you know, me being calm and, and perfectly even keel is a great superpower. And it's not always the best superpower. There are times when if I needed to speak up, if I needed to articulate something that was uncomfortable, if I needed to put somebody in their place, I, would, I wasn't able to do that. And so, you know, that process of learning how to balance out those superpowers, the good ones and the negative ones, because they're swing either way, they're, they're potentially a negative thing, uh, brought me to this place of really understanding how to navigate life in a powerful way. And I always said to myself, well, what is the place where we feel like we don't necessarily have the most power? You know, we can choose to not dive into our relationships. We can choose to maybe be single for a long time or sort of check out and and not really be super present in a relationship. And if the other person is doing the same thing that you can kind of ride like that for a long time, but in your career, you can't. In your career, you have to show up. You have to go to work <laughs> unless you're wealthy and have massive streams of income and don't have to worry about things like that. But for the most of us, we have to go to work. We have to deal with different personalities. There's not, well, more so now you could potentially work from home and not deal with anybody ever, <laughs> but we have to navigate people for, the, and we have bosses. We, if we are an entrepreneur, you're all, you're going to have to face all of this stuff at some point because it will be the thing that holds you back. And the thing that got you, the superpower that maybe got you to where you are now might be the very superpower that's holding you back to get to the next level. And usually it's because that superpower is an imbalance. It's because you're trying to prevent and protect from bad things happening instead of using it to create something powerful, good, and future driven. Yeah, I, I really appreciate the, the story and, and just that insight. I've talked about that before on, on maybe a few weeks ago about like the pendulum, right? Of like the extremes where we know that the, the extremes are, are bad, but sometimes being in the middle is not good either. Okay. But maybe being a little bit off that middle, not, not quite the extreme, but a little bit off where you can really use that superpower when you need to, or kind of hush it up a little bit when it's not going, going to serve you. And I, I had a question for you. Uh, yeah. I'm wondering, you know, just listening to you talk, um, 
do you think when people are trying to kind of figure this stuff out in their lives, do you feel or do you think or in, in your experience, is it that people avoid trying to, to, to look back at these past experiences or do you think that people just don't have the tools to properly assess them and use them to be a benefit to them instead of a, a hindrance? Well, I think people definitely do not have the tools, but what happens in our nervous system, anytime we've had an adverse experience and, and you weren't able to process it fully emotionally, and let's face it, we were all taught to stuff our emotions and not to process our emotions. Stereotypically, men were not allowed to feel sad or weak. Women were not allowed to get angry. So it, every single person, for, I mean, I'm sure there are some parents that sat down and taught their kids how to process their emotions fully, but probably if you're over the age of 30, you probably didn't have parents that did that because your parents didn't know how to do it. But the, when you have these unprocessed emotions, your subconscious mind is going to pivot you so fast away from anything that could possibly even be create that situation again. And your subconscious mind works so fast that let's see, you guys all know what that is, right? Didn't have to think about it. It happened so fast that it, because it's an anchor in your nervous system. So your unconscious mind works that fast and it's going to be like, oh, that might be lead to rejection. So we're going to go over here. And you're not even going to know that you even got close. So yes, people absolutely avoid anything that looks similar to these things, uh, to these past events, but they don't do it on purpose. People are not saying, I mean, sometimes they do it on purpose, but for the most part, it's happening before they're even consciously aware of it. And you can, you know, we all have heard like work on my boundaries, work on saying no, work on um, just calming my anger down, whatever it is. And you know that even if you're doing that, even if you're like, okay, I'm going to stand up for myself right now, you're the internal stuff going on while you're trying to do that has you show up tense has your like your mind's racing a million miles an hour because your subconscious mind literally thinks you're going to die it's like this is a dangerous situation you didn't have the resources to handle it before so now you are what are you doing and so you've got so much stuff going on that if I'm trying to stand up for myself and my body's all tense and I'm feeling like edgy inside, like if I feel like this inside and I'm trying to say, no, that's not how we're going to do it. I can't, I, I'd come out like, no, no, I don't think that we should do it that way because da, 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 you're going to over explain. You're going to do all of these things that really pull you back from being your powerful self and just saying, no, we're not going to do it that way and moving on. Yeah. It's, it's great. You know, the, the highest like level of, or, or maybe it's the lowest level of being is just survival. Right. And that's like what your subconscious mind and what's crazy is <clears throat> we don't, it was developed for a very specific reason because back, you know, hundreds, thousands of years ago, like there was real danger all the time. All the time. And now in our modern world, we don't really typically see actual danger. So our brains, like our brain, is still seeing it as danger, but it's not necessarily like physical danger. It's it's like emotional or social danger, you know. But okay. um, Chad, I see, I see you have your hand raised. I don't know if you you had something to say. Yeah, yeah. So uh, this is great. Great. Um, you help people navigate through this. Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah, we, I, I work with people to basically eliminate these things out of your nervous system so that you can show up powerfully in your career the rest of your life, too. I was just thinking this morning how that fear of being wrong, of doing it wrong, affected the way I used to travel. Like I would never go on a big travel group or like somebody that would have 
these like predetermined things that you would do because I would be so afraid of if I missed the meet if I missed the meetup time if I, it's something like I was afraid of doing it wrong so I limited my travel experience as to what I could do on my own where nobody could potentially see what I was doing if I screwed it up or anything like that. But yeah, that's one of the things that that we re I really do. I work with people to um, break through this stuff so that they can move forward powerfully in their career and the rest of their lives too. So you could so, travel better. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So like Christian was saying, some people have a hard time looking back at their childhood. My thing is some people don't know that that's where they need to look. Mm -hmm. So how do you, when you get your message out there, in my mind, it's either somebody that's already hit rock bottom and they're grabbing for straws for help, but a lot of people miss it because they just live that life and they've got accustomed to it. So how do you get your message to create that gap in people's lives so they can actually see the potential problem that they don't even realize that they have? and then have him or them engage into your process of taking a look back, you know, facilitated introspection or, or, or what have you to even go back there because it's so ingrained in them. Right. Right. So how does that work? Well, it's, you know, from a marketing standpoint, when I'm talking to people, you know, we talk about feeling great at work. That is what, that is what we're going for. The reality is, you know, I did all the things. I mean, not I'm like all the things <laughs> to try and feel better. And most people, what they think about when they're trying to get rid of this stuff or clear this stuff, they think <laughs> about going to therapy and I have to talk about it and I have to do all of this stuff. And the, and the thing is, is that's actually, in my experience, not what helped. You know, the work I do, we do it from a different standpoints so that you don't have to go back and relive all of that stuff. Nobody wants to relive that stuff. And it doesn't serve you. In fact, when you think about it, when you talk about it, you're literally running those same neural pathways and you're making them stronger. And so there's a way to bypass that so that you can clear that stuff out of your nervous system without having to relive it. And, you know, the reality is people want to feel good and work is one of those places that again you hit that wall and you have to deal with it at some point so you can kind of avoid it like i had i avoided certain ways of traveling it was real easy to just go travel by myself and not have to worry about anybody else really easy to do all that but when it comes to work you can't avoid it so you're you're faced with that stuff you either go and keep job hopping, which doesn't really serve you, or you deal with how to deal with your terrible boss or your horrible coworkers or deal with the over the top stress because you're on the edge of burning out. And if you burn out, then you can't work. So it's um, this place of, you know, when you're at that point, nobody wants to talk about it, but they're willing to do what it takes to get there. And it does take work, but it's really simple. You know, I spent 20 years trying to figure out how to fix this stuff because most of the stuff that's out there doesn't work. It just makes you think about it more, which actually makes it worse in a lot of cases. Does anyone else have any? I have a quick question. We don't have to go into details. Have you read Dianetics? I have not read Dianetics. Okay. Just made me think of it. I haven't either, but I hear about it quite often. It sounds very similar to what you're talking about. So. Now I feel like anytime a, a book comes up that it, I've, it, it's been floating around for a while, but I haven't actually read it, I'm like, okay, it's coming up again. Probably very controversial. I'll, I'll say that. And apparently it's very long and a difficult read, but um yeah right. um yeah come uh if you have a question just come off come off mute you're good yes good morning everyone thank you so much it's fascinating fascinating conversation in terms of real estate there is some studies uh that are similar and i love it it's 
written by Larry Kendall of his Ninja Spelling System. That's actually a textbook used in MBA programs. It's a definitive. Uh, it's definitive, and so it talks all about personal vibes, like the vibes that you put out there in, into your communications, and that you can't see these vibes but you can feel them and a camera can actually photograph the heat that it, like when someone walks into a room, you know how sometimes they can light up the room with their vibe. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, he was talking about the, the subconscious mind is now referred to as unconscious because neuroscience realizes that the unconscious mind controls such a majority of our action it's no longer considered less than or sub so they're calling it in this new science the unconscious mind fascinating stuff that uh larry goes over in his book as he talks all about real estate so again it's larry kendall and uh, yeah i did read dianetics chris <laughs> you did okay i, I haven't it's, read yeah. it but one of my coaches has it, so. It's like so, it's like soundtracks, the soundtracks that run through your mind is like a playlist. And uh, we choose our thoughts. It's very important to choose your thoughts like you choose what you're going to wear and yeah. you can choose uh, to take them with you or not. I love it. Can you say Thanks. the name of that book one more time? Sure. It's um, Ninja Selling. Ninja Larry Kendall, mm -hmm. and there's um, it's a hard covered text that has won all the awards, and uh, it it's so important for mindset because mindset yeah. is everything in in um, entrepreneurism. So yeah. yeah, I'd love to say one quick thing about choosing your thoughts. Yeah. So we hear that all the time. Choose your thoughts. Positive thoughts think good things. But just like I showed you that Nike swoosh, you couldn't even think about it. Mm -hmm. And so much of what's driving your actions and your behavior is happening so fast that you're not even aware of it, that you can't even grab it to flip it around before it happens. And that's why this work is so important. And it's why so many people fail no matter how hard they try yeah it's like the, the old thing don't don't think of a purple elephant yeah you know, like, well yeah exactly so, <laughs> so um so we're at 8 46. Uh, i really appreciate you coming on today it was very like like everybody's saying very fascinating um a couple things where can people find out more about you uh i don't know if, if you want to put your phone number in the chat or, or whatever just where people can find more about you and then any any last closing real quick we got we're over time, but you know, um, closing statements, I should say. Last closing statement, wherever you are, so many people are worried about what, how to get to the thing and they're thinking about when I get there and this and that, just say, bring yourself back to what you have right now and say, what is the next best step I can take with what I have right now. And that's the key because you were trying so hard and we're thinking about all these things. If, when, da, 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 you're not dealing with what you have right now. Yeah. Uh, so what's the next best step I can take with what I have right now. And you guys can reach out to me at JaneaBarnes.com, G-E-N-E-A-B-A-R-N-E-S.com. I also have a free gift, ElevateFreeGift.com, where you can, it's the three, it's the three reasons why self-care actually makes your work stress worse, and the one thing that actually does work, so, and you can do that at ElevateFreeGift.com. Well, thanks again so much. Thank you, everybody, for being here. It's 847. We went a little bit over. We'll be all right. We will survive. Have a great weekend. We will be back on uh, on Monday, 815. We'll see you all then. Thank you so much.